Welcome to Fort Bend Tutoring. Today we will be teaching you on a new subject of which you might find interesting. Please put your cigarette down and pay attention for a minute. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about writing linear equations in point-slope form. That's right, the point-slope form of a linear equation. In other words, a line. That's right. So when you have graphs of lines, sometimes your instructors, your teachers, your text may want you to write the equation of the line in point-slope form. So this is it right here. That's right. Point slope form is y minus y1 equals to m, which is a slope by the way, times x minus x1. So this is the formula that we will be using in today's tutorial. So to break this down even further, we have the following legend here. And that is to inform you that the m is the slope. That's right, that variable m is commonly known as the slope, which determines how your line will rise on your graph. Here, my x1 value is simply the x value of the point that's given, or the first point if given more than one point and the y1 value is the y value of the point that's given or the y value of the first point that is given all right so let's look at some problems shall we all right let's check this out problem number one coming up in problem number one I'm asked to find the equation of a line in point slope form given the point negative 2 4 from the line and a slope of 3 so check this out the name point slope form is used because they give me a point and the slope or in other words all I need to create the equation is one point and the slope so when given both of those pieces of information I can end up writing my equation of a line but first we're going to label that's right take that first point and label it as x1 y1 just like that and then using the formula y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1 we will then plug in those three variables into the equation meaning we'll plug in x1 as negative 2 y1 will be 4 and then we'll have our slope as positive 3 so let's see what it looks like in rewriting our equation we'll have y minus 4 equals to our slope of 3 times x minus my x1 value which is negative 2. To ensure our result is going to be correct I'm going to show with parentheses that that value of x1 happens to be a negative value by using an extra set of parentheses here. Simplifying this further we'll go ahead and combine our signs and bring down that y minus 4 equals to 3 times the quantity of x plus 2 and this ladies and gentlemen that's right this is my point slope form of a linear equation. That's right, so no need to solve for y or anything like that. Mm -mm. So if they're asking you to write the answer in point slope form, this is the end result. After you plug in your values, you simplify, and that's it. Done and done. That was problem number one. All right, so problem number two. In problem number two, I have a slope that's 3 fourths and the point given from the line is 7, negative 3. So if asked to write our equation in point slope form, we're going to start with our first step, which is to label the point. So I'm going to label my point as x1, y1, just like that. And then it's always a great idea to write down the formula every time you use it. So I'm going to write down my formula as y minus y1 equals to m times the quantity of x minus x1, like so. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to replace those variables y1, m, and x1 from the formula. So this is going to be y minus my y1 value, which happens to be negative 3. And once again, because that value is negative, I'm going to express that using parentheses so that I know that it's different from the negative sign or the minus sign from the formula. Then this equals to 3 fourths times x minus my x1 value, which is 7. Okay, from here, all you have to do is simplify the signs here. In other words, combine your signs, knowing that a negative times a negative is a positive, you'll have y plus 3 equals to 3 fourths times the quantity of x minus 7. And this is our answer in point slope form. That's it. That's all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. And a nice red box for you. All right, so let's move on. In this next problem, number three, we're given an equation. So check out the graph right here. Check out this graph here. All right. And we're going to be writing our answer in point slope form. So what you need from the line is an actual point. So if I check out this point right here, this coordinate is going to be 0, 1 for that point. And all I need is one point. The other thing I need from this graph is the slope. So remember, the slope is equivalent to the rise over the run, right? So to the left here, I'll have my m variable for the slope, knowing that it's the rise 
over the run, I'm going to take this first point and I'm going to count over to the second point to the right. So from this first point, I would have to move down one. So that's going to be a negative one value for the rise. And then I'm going to have to run over one, two, three, four values to the right. So I'm going to end up with a positive four for the run. That means that my slope is negative one fourth and I have one point from the line and I name that as zero one. Now you can use any point from this line right here, but I like to use the easiest one. So therefore using zero as my x one value and one as my y one value, I'll be utilizing that point slope form formula to come up with my result. So my formula once again is y minus y one equals to m times x minus x one. And now that I've located a point from the line as well as I found out the slope of the line, I can go ahead and write my result. So this is going to be y minus a y1 value of 1, which equals to my slope of negative 1 fourth times x minus my x1 value, which happens to be 0. Okay, so from here, we will be simplifying this a bit further here. I know that I'll be able to bring down my y minus 1, and since x minus 0 is just x, we can write the right side as negative 1 fourth x. And that's the answer in point slope form. So I'll be boxing up my answer here. All right, so let's move on to our next problem here. In problem number four, we're given two points on the line. Now remember, the point slope form is called just that because you have to have a point and the slope. But here, they're just giving me two points. So the first thing you'll need to do is find out what the slope is. And we can do that using the slope formula. So since we need to find out the slope, I'm going to start by labeling my two points as x1, y1, x2, y2. And then I'll be needing the slope formula, which is m equals to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And then I'll be plugging in those values to solve for the slope. So my y2 value is 4 four minus my y1 value of zero divided by my x2 value which is negative one minus my x1 value which happens to be two. So simplifying this further you end up with a positive four over negative three so that means that my slope of the line is going to be negative four thirds. All right, so I'll be keeping up with this value here, and I'll be utilizing that in my point slope formula, okay? So we'll be using the first point, that 2, 0, as well as this slope of negative 4 thirds. So that being the case, let's start by writing down our point slope formula, which is going to be y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1, and then plugging in those values. So plugging these values in, remember that our point is 2, 0. So that means that I'll have y minus 0, which is the y1 value, equals to negative 4 thirds times x minus my x1 value, which happens to be 2. So once I have this, we all know that y minus 0 is just y. That's right. So adding or subtracting 0 is not going to change the value any. We'll be able to simplify this to y equals to negative 4 thirds times the quantity of x minus 2. And this is our answer in point slope form. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. That's problem number four. In problem number five, we have the following problem. We have two points once again. We have one negative three as well as negative two three. So our steps haven't changed whatsoever. We're going to start by labeling these two points first. So I'm going to have x1, y1 for the first point, And then here I follow up with x2, y2 for the second point. Then I still need to find out the slope. In order to use the point slope form, you need a point and the slope. So I need to find out what the slope is. So here comes that slope formula again. I'll have m equals to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. That's the slope formula. So go ahead and plug in your values from here. You'll be plugging in 3 for your y2 value minus your y1 value, which happens to be negative 3. All of this is going to be over negative 2 minus my x1 value, which happens to be 1. Okay, from here in the numerator, we'll be able to combine these signs. A negative negative is going to be a positive, so I can convert that into 3 plus 3 over negative 2 minus 1. And that simplifies to 6 over negative 3, which simplifies to negative 2 for the slope. So now that we have a point and the slope, we'll be plugging in these values into the point slope formula, which is y minus y1 
equals to m times the quantity of x minus x1. And so you'll be plugging in, replacing the y1 value, the m, as well as the x1 value. This y and x variable, that stays the same. Leave those two variables alone, okay? So you'll have y minus a y1 value of negative 3, which equals to my slope, which happens to be negative 2, times x minus my x1 value, which is 1. From this point, you do need to combine these signs on the left side here to end up with the following answer, which is y plus 3, which equals to negative 2 times the quantity of x minus 1. And this is the answer. All right, let's go ahead and gift wrap that in a nice red box here. And we can move on to problem number 6, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we have problem number six. And in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, this problem is asking us to find the equation of the line in point-slope form going through the point 3, negative 5, and that happens to be parallel to the line y equals to 2x plus 3. So you do need to keep in mind that anytime you're dealing with parallel lines, parallel lines have the exact same slope. So we need to find the slope of this given equation first and use that same exact slope value in our formula. So, knowing that this is in slope-intercept form, that's right, that y equals mx plus b form, the slope of this line happens to be 2. That's right. And so any parallel line slope would also be 2. That's right. So keep in mind that when you're dealing with parallel lines, their slopes are the exact same. So our parallel line slope that we'll be writing has to have a slope of 2. Now, knowing that we're going through the point 3, negative 5, let's go ahead and label that as x1, y1. And from here, we'll be using the point slope formula. All right. So I have it written as y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. That's right. Write it down every time. That's how you drill it into your brain. All right. Now, plug in those values. So our equation is rewritten as y minus our y1 value, which happens to be negative 5 from our given point, which equals to our slope that parallel line slope is 2 times the quantity of x minus our x1 value, which happens to be positive 3. So we end up with a quantity of x minus 3 here. This is not your answer because you still need to combine your signs over here on the left side. So instead of having y minus negative 5, we'll know that a negative times a negative is a positive. So our result is y plus 5, which equals to 2 times the quantity of x minus 3. And this is our result right here done and done. All right. Yeah. That's the result of problem number six. Let's continue. Okay. In problem number seven, we're given a point negative three, one. And you know what? Let's go ahead and label that. I mean, we know we're going to write our answer in point slope form, so let's, let's stop pretending here. So we'll end up labeling the point first. That's right. I have x1, y1. This symbol right here, right here, that symbol, yeah. This upside down t, yeah, that means perpendicular. Mm -hmm. That's right. They want us to write a linear equation that happens to be perpendicular to the line 2x minus 3y equals to 6. So for me, the easiest way to find out the slope of this given line is to solve for y. Yeah. Put it in slope-intercept form. That way we can easily identify what the slope of the line is. So that means I'll be subtracting 2x to both sides. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be bringing down negative 3y which equals to negative 2x plus 6. Mm -hmm. I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I end up with y equals to positive 2 thirds x minus 2. How do you like that? So now that I have this in slope-intercept form, I can identify my slope as 2 thirds. That's the slope of the given line. But know that anytime you have perpendicular lines and they want you to write the perpendicular line to this line, you have to find the opposite reciprocal. That means that you need to flip this slope and change the sign. So my perpendicular line slope is going to be equivalent to negative 3 halves. So I change the sign from a positive to a negative and I literally found the reciprocal aka flipped 2 thirds into 3 halves. And this is the slope that I want to use for my equation, negative 3 halves. That's the perpendicular line's slope. Yeah, okay. So this is going to be written in point-slope form, right? So that means I need to write down the formula. So my formula is y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. All right. And then we'll be replacing our y1, our m, and our x1 values into the formula. 
So I have y minus 1, that 1 from our given point, equals to our slope, which is negative 3 halves, times x minus our x1 value, which happens to be negative 3. So I'm going to show that with extra parentheses. From here, we'll be combining our signs. That's right, combine those signs. So I rewrite it as y minus 1 equals to negative 3 halves times x plus 3, and done. That's the answer. Nice red box around it. That's right. That's how you know I'm done. And there you have it. That's problem number seven. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Here we have 8a. Yeah, we have 8a. And in 8a, we're given a slope of 7 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 4. Well, we're going to be writing our answer in point-slope form, right? So this point, that y-intercept, we'll go ahead and label that as x1, y1. Yeah, and then utilizing our formula here, we have y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1, the point slope formula. I'll be replacing the y1, the x1, and the m variables. So our answer is y minus negative 4, which equals to 7 times x minus our x1 value, which happens to be 0, right? Where there's two things that we'll be doing here. We know that we need to simplify. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, and x minus 0 is just x, and 7 times x is 7x. So that means that we'll give a simplified answer of y plus 4 equals to 7x. And that's it. Box around the answer. And on to the next problem. Yeah. Here we have 8b. 8b, ladies and gentlemen, we have a slope of negative 1 half. Mm -hmm. We have a y-intercept of 3. Now, if this was going to be written as an ordered pair, you should know that the y-intercept would be 0, 3. So we'll use this form of the point. So when they give you the b value and you're asked to write your answer in point-slope form, then you may want to write any y-intercept as an ordered pair, which means that your x value must be 0. Mm -hmm. And the given value, 3 in this case, is going to be your y value. That's right. So let's go ahead and label that point as x1, y1, okay? Because we're going to be plugging these values into the point slope formula, which is y minus y1, which equals to m times the quantity of x minus x1, and we will be replacing the y1, the m, and the x1. Yes, we will. So that means we'll have y minus a y1 value of 3, which equals to a slope of negative 1 half times x minus my x1 value, which happens to be 0. Okay? So just like the last problem, when you have x minus 0, it's just x. So you'll write your final answer as y minus 3 equals to negative 1 half x and done. All right, let's go ahead and box that up here. Just like that, y minus 3 equals a negative 1 half x. That is the point slope form of the equation, ladies and gentlemen. So this wraps up this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please click that donate button and donate. Peace. We appreciate your time. Don't you want to learn mathematics the correct way? You need a foundation. Do not just be guessing at your numbers. Contact us today. Look us up on your Facebook at Fort Bend Tutoring. Learn it well, honey.